Hey, I'm Katie Wawa, and you're watching The Record Review. My baby lives in shades of blue. So one of the things that Lana Del Rey has been accused of is glamorizing drugs within her music. If you have been following Lana Del Rey for a while, you'll know that they tend to sneak in there. Throughout Ultraviolence, there are a lot of drugs mentioned. She talks about heroin, amphetamines, hydroponic weed, um, and I think Florida Kilo's the bonus track on the deluxe edition is all about cocaine. And of course there is alcohol smattered throughout. So one of the things that people have said is that this album is kind of glamorizing addiction. So I guess I got two things to say about that. Number one, Lana Del Rey is definitely not the first musical artist to mention drugs. Let's face it, rave culture, New Order have a whole song called Blue Monday, which is all about how depressing Monday is after you spent the weekend taking drugs. There She Goes by The Lars, all about heroin. So many songs, I can't even list them all. I'm sure you guys can list a lot more as well. I don't know if it's fair to single out Lana Del Rey for doing that. But secondly, I think that context here is really important. It's one thing to glamorize a drug by saying, oh, we're having having so much fun with taking this drug, but that's not really what Lana Del Rey does. Ultraviolence is a very sad album, and the fact that drugs feature so heavily is perhaps because Lana Del Rey is implying here that taking drugs might not be the best choice. You know, she talks about people who love their heroin more than they love people. Is that glamorizing it? I don't think so. It would be a bit weird to expect songs to just not mention drugs at all, and I think it's actually far more helpful if songs are written about addiction and how addiction affects people. I think that Lana Del Rey actually does a fantastic job in the song Shades of Cool in addressing what it's like to be in a relationship with someone who has addiction and problems. Shades of Cool seems to be all about being in a relationship with somebody who is distant and is unable to really commit to a relationship because he loves a substance more than he loves his girlfriend. And I think that that's a really clever and interesting way of addressing it, the effect that drugs can have on your social life. Because I honestly think it's a lot more effective to do that. Obviously, you, when you take any sort of substance, you do get something out of it. Even if you think of something like caffeine, when you drink a cup of coffee, you're drinking it because it tastes good, because it makes you feel good. You're not drinking it because it's bad for you. Of course, the same can be said for drugs and the way that addiction works. People don't continue to be addicted because it's not nice, but it obviously has a bad effect. Some of the people who experience those negative effects almost immediately are the people around you. So in Shades of Cool, when Anna Del Rey shows us what it's like to be in a relationship with someone who's addicted, she shows that this person is not cool as in cool, but cool as in cold. You don't want to be around someone who loves drugs more than they love people. So I think that's a very clever song that should actually be praised a lot more highly for the perspective it gives. Rather than pretending that drugs just don't exist and that people don't take them, Lana Del Rey is showing that they do exist and they do have an effect on more than just the one person who takes them. <laughs> Um, so this week I'm going to be finally reviewing Ultraviolence by Lana Del Rey. Um, I know that a lot of people have been really looking forward to this and I'm really looking forward to it, so let's get started. 